Hey everybody, this is Al Nash from the Direction Your Empowerment Dynasty and you're listening to the Unapologetic Women podcast, the show for female leaders who love to live their legacies unleashed, unlimited and unafraid. If this is a community you would like to be part of, visit directionu.co forward slash unapologetic. Today we're talking about the loving yourself with Dana Owens. Dana is the copywriter and copy strategist behind Next Level Copy Incorporated. After more than two decades of writing copy in all of its many forms, she now specializes in her biggest copy passion, case studies. She conducts juicy client interviews and writes from a story-based approach to make the case studies she creates compelling, engaging, and highly effective at closing sales. She believes there's not a business on the planet that can't benefit from sharing the stories of her client's success through case studies, as well as a business owner who can't reap the benefits of learning about the value and impact of their work directly from their client's mouths. When Dana isn't writing, she's watching one of her daughter's many sporting events, hanging out with her terrier rescue named Oreo, or lacing up her running shoes to hit the road or trail for a run. Lots of facets. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Dana Owens. First of all, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast as my guest today. I'm really excited to have this conversation because you're one of those women that I met this year and it was just that instant, oh, hell yeah, like my people. Um and I have to say, there was a long time I didn't meet a lot of my people. And I, I really started to feel like, am I the only one in the world? What's going on here? Am I living in the wrong place? And then keeping the faith. And it seems like I've reached a tipping point. And now just about every single person that I meet, which interestingly enough, is always through introduction. I'm just like, oh, yeah, there's another one. Yeah, um, I feel the same way. Yeah, thanks for being another one of the crazies. Because so, <laughs> we are. I mean, according to normal He's society, of them. we are crazy. <laughs> what does it mean for you to be an unapologetic woman? Let's start there. Okay, well, that's, I love that question so much. And I feel like um, I have really stepped into very recently just really stepped in stepped into fully embodying being unapologetic um and it's just, just such an amazing and exciting place to be so i feel that i am very unapologetic about just being the most authentic version of myself and and being unapologetic about all of the different offshoots of that so being unapologetic in myself and what my needs and desires are for me personally, but then also being unapologetic with what that expression looks like in my business and what that expression looks like in my friendships and what that expression looks like in a romantic relationship and what that looks like with my immediate family and the way that I parent. And, um, yeah, just being unapologetic in all of the different ex expressions of myself. I love that. And and I have to say, it took me a long time to get back to that point. And what I mean by that is I believe we all were unapologetic when we were little girls and then life happened and we started apologizing a lot and started to conform and started to try and have people like us. And eventually we got to have to make the choice of do we reclaim ourselves or do we continue abandoning ourselves to be accepted by other people? And for me, what was really interesting, and I think a lot of people still don't understand this, is when you get to that point of becoming unapologetically you, returning to yourself, getting to know what your preferences are and how you choose to express, you allow other people to do the same. You no longer mm -hmm. need other people to think like you, act like you. you there's such an appreciation for diversity. Mm -hmm. Do you find that yes. as well? Oh, yes, totally. And I feel like there was such a shift when I finally really became 
unapologetic, which to me really meant that I deeply um, began to love and accept and appreciate myself. And it made me feel, has made me feel so much more centered, like not just, just like centered and accepting of who I am, but like deeply, deeply peaceful with myself. And when you embody that feeling of deep peace, like you stop looking at other people as a threat to you all the time or annoying, or, I mean, I remember that I, I used to just get so frustrated with people. Um, it became so frustrating that people were not living the way that I wanted them to. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and then when I really became deeply committed to myself and the way that I expressed in my life and not feeling like I was adamant on comparing myself or trying to fix someone or change someone, all of a sudden, just like you said, everyone became so much more interesting. And it wasn't, um, yeah, everyone just became more interesting and I became more open to the way that other people were expressing themselves in the world because I had become so accepting of the way that I was doing it. So yeah, I totally agree. Oh, beautiful. Let, let's go to another unexpected place from, from that piece of the conversation. And, and I'll go first. I also found that the more unapologetic I became, the more, and I'm gonna use the word judgment, judgmental I became in terms of, and judgmental is not really the word, but in terms of behavior. I stopped judging people, but I started becoming very judgmental of behavior. So becoming an observer and going, that is right for me and that is wrong for me. And it's interesting for me to observe how in the conversations that I'm having with women right now, who by the way, are all emotionally mature women, and they are women who lived a lot, lived through a lot, and have done a lot of work, the internal work to get to that point of love, right? That it's no longer, um, names are no longer required. We can judge behaviors openly and, and understand it's because we're not saying that that behavior is wrong for that person, but we get to start judging whether behavior is good or right for ourselves and allowing everybody else to have that experience as well. What's your yes. thought? That? Well, I think the word that you're looking for isn't judgment, it's discernment. Mm -hmm. And I so agree because going back to what I was saying that when I really started to stop apologizing for my needs and desires and I, I instead dove into it and accepted it, I I did establish this deep sense of peace and that peace is worth protecting and it's worth protecting at all costs. <laughs> and so I'm the same. I've become so much more um, open and appreciative to other people's journeys and the way that they're expressing, but that doesn't mean that I am throwing my arms open to them and saying bring in your journey bring in whatever it is you're processing I can handle it it's like oh no I can observe you from afar and I can bless you from afar and I can help you when it is I know that my inner peace is protected and that I'm I'm not putting myself in any kind of danger that your energy field is going to come and upset mine for the negative. But if I recognize that behavior as being a, a threat to my own inner peace, then I bless and release. I, I, it's, it's so worth being discerning to other people's energy and what other people are going through. And that's no negative judgment on their process. It's just, you have, I am nothing. I cannot operate in my, full and true expression unless I protect that deep feeling of centeredness and peace that I feel so and it's interesting yeah, I agree one of the things that I've noticed more and more is the more peaceful I become the more grounded I feel the less I'm willing to sweat the small stuff 
So I almost find it mm -hmm. comical a lot of the times when people go into the drama zone and I can listen to them and I go, wow, we, if you had to just strip all the drama away and just go down to the bare bones of what's happening, you wouldn't even have the conversation because it's so inconsequential in the big picture. And I know that it sounds insensitive to a lot of people and it doesn't, I don't mean to be insensitive. I just find it fascinating how drama addicted society has become. And for those of us who choose to undrama ourselves, there's a preciousness and an appreciation and an enjoyment of the richness of life without needing the drama. And yeah. that's the piece but that I, I feel. I feel though that that drama, whether it's your own internal drama or you're getting hooked into other people's drama is really just you reacting to either your own triggers. It's You're always reacting to your own triggers, whether you stimulated those triggers inside of yourself or someone else has stimulated those triggers for you. And then you choose to engage in those triggers and it turns into drama. But once you become open and committed to understanding those triggers and doing the work to heal them, then you recognize the drama starters for what they are. And you can say, like, I've become so much better at saying, oh, oh my gosh, I feel triggered by something that that person just said, or something I saw on TV, or something that a situation, um, you know, like a work situation, or I sit down and I read an email and oh, I'll feel triggered, you know, and it's like, being able to recognize that I'm being triggered. And like, not reacting right away, but taking a deep breath and figuring out how to respond. And so when you slow it all down, like that, and you recognize that you're being triggered, you can cut that drama off, like before it even develops into anything. Because like I said, I want to do everything I can to protect that feeling of deep inner peace that I found, which I love. And it's if I engage in my triggers and engage in that drama, I know I'm instantly going to lose that inner peace feeling. And so it's like, nope. Okay. I got to, I've been triggered. I need to recognize and address and heal that trigger. And then I can maintain that sense of inner peace. And there is like, I'm, I feel like my life has become dramatically drama free, which is so awesome. And it's also not a rejection of the triggers. I, I often find that people will oh, no, not a rejection. They'll reject so many of the human experience. And the more I have embraced the human experience with my anger, with my tantrums, with my triggers, with my my crying sometimes, with, with, with the more I embrace it as all part of the human experience, well, the richer my life experience becomes and the faster I seem to move through everything. Like I, I just move because it's, oh, that's interesting. I'm being triggered. It's not that, oh my God, I'm being triggered. What's wrong with me? This shouldn't be happening anymore. I should have all my shit together. No, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm being triggered. What's that about? Like, you know, let's have that conversation and, and let's get to the bottom of it. Yes, yes that I've realized with every woman that I've interviewed on this podcast is that there were multiple moments in which we had that, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm committed to being happy. I'm committed to finding my peace. And for the most part, they were severe, right? They, they, were, they were not easy events. Was there an event that was one of the turning points for you that you maybe want to share with some of the listeners? Because what I've also discovered is so often we all feel like it only happens to us and we feel isolated. And the more there's themes that's coming through in the conversations that kind of go, ladies, we, or, we're going through this, like you're not alone. Would you mind sharing one of your moments that was a turning point for you? Well, the most recent, and I feel like it's just been in the last two or three months that I've really dropped into a whole 
deeper, better level of self-acceptance. And the event for that was yet another like deep um, emotional experience around um, a relationship that was ending. So I have all had this pattern in romantic relationships where I'm either with a partner who is very, very safe and will not hurt me, which then I don't feel a deep connection to because I don't have the desire to be intimate as much and put myself out there. The whole thing's just so safe. It becomes boring. So that's either one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is I'm in a relationship with someone that I feel such deep connection and deep desire to be close to. And those relationships are the ones that trigger have triggered me the most. I mean, that's, I, I now I'm realizing that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to really bring up my wounding because it's my soul saying, hey, this is like such a great partner to you for you to grow with. This person is such a great mirror for you. And so I was in um, a relationship for three years with someone who it took me about a year to finally realize, oh my goodness, like this person is such an amazing mirror for the things that I need to really heal and grow in myself. And um, that relationship ended, which was very devastating to me. Um, and it hit me that it was truly over about a month ago. And um, that event was just this feeling of deep despair that it was over and a feeling of deep rejection and like inner wounding and sadness. And I hated the feeling so much. It felt like this like awful pit in my stomach where nothing that I could do external I didn't realize that I was trying to fill that feeling with external I was trying to fill it with wine I was trying to fill it with uh, Netflix I was trying to fill it with overwork I was trying to fill it with worry like all of these things and it it just finally I was like I cannot withstand this feeling and this is feels like a feeling that I have been withstanding in so many different relationships throughout my life and it was just this moment like what is going on here? Like, I need to figure out what this pattern is. I need to get, I need to figure out once and for all why I allow myself to sit in this feeling and what I can truly do that's going to make it not only go away, I, I don't know that it'll all go away, but like just to, to feel whole, no matter what circumstance is going on with a relationship ending or relationship issue or anything. And so that really led me on this journey because my the question that bubbled up for me was, why are none of these external fixes that I'm trying and have always tried to rely on working? And so I had this one question really bubble up and it was like, why? It feels like my self-worth is low like it feels like my self-worth is low to the point where I overlooked some things that maybe I shouldn't to even be in the situation at all and I wanted I want to discover what is going on with that and so that led me to really dive deeply into myself and say I will no longer allow myself to feel so unmoored I don't think that there's a good reason for this and it feels very unsafe and unhealthy so I dove into this inner work really looking to figure out what had happened to my self-worth or where's my self-worth to allow this situation to happen and what I found was all of these external sources will always let me down and and helping me to heal any you know this feeling of emptiness inside of me what really needs to develop right now is this very deep and fulfilling relationship with myself because I was looking to my partnerships well, they were great mirrors and oh my gosh, like I got so much learning out of each and every one of them. What I really have never had 
was a true, deep and meaningful partnership with myself. And so in the last three months, I've done this amazing work and I've established this rock solid. And I know this process will go on for the rest of my life, but I finally established this very deep foundational relationship and true partnership with myself. And the minute that I realized that and started to put my attention there, I didn't need any of these external sources. To be honest with you, just establishing that, I mean, in the last three months, I've had the most amazing results. I have cured a 40 year <laughs> negative relationship with sugar because I have this deep relationship now with myself. I have completely established this new confidence in myself about how I will ever enter into a relationship again for the rest of my life, whether it's a friendship, a business partnership, a romantic relationship, the way that I parent, like, oh my gosh, all of, I just realized, ah, the answer. Finally, I understand when people say you cannot love another, another until you love yourself. Like I've understood that theoretically, but I have, I finally got to that place where I said no more with this deep, empty feeling and this true deep relationship I'm forming with myself. I realized it's like, it's the secret to life. So it's been it's amazing. It's everything. It's the it's the secret to everything. Understanding that we are whole and complete is is the cure for every single um, a mental disease in the world today. And mm -hmm. I have been saying for a while that we are living in a time which I call the return to self. It is in the return to ourselves that we can finally be whole and then start becoming interdependent and building the next layer of consciousness and humanity. And thank you so much for sharing yes. this. And, you know, it really brought to mind, I learned this, um, it's called the holes to wholeness theory. Oh God, I learned it about 20 years ago. And it is that we are born whole and complete. And then as life happens, we self-abandon. And every time we self-abandon, a whole kind of gets formed and we walk through life as holy people attracting mm -hmm. other people with holes in and we we then say oh you complete me right in the coming together you complete me not understanding that as they they come together they actually just the wedging in of each other just makes the holes bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and then when we when we finally get to do the whole work and become whole again we now a match to attract somebody else who is whole and that's where true partnership comes from. Neither yes. one completes the other, but it's yes. a whole new unit that's formed by two holes that makes the great yes. sum of the two. Um, yes. And that is for me was so powerful when I first learned that. And even mm -hmm. in learning the theory, it still took me 15 years to get it and still <laughs> yes. being in a relationship with somebody to complete me. Um, until I, I realized I had so far self-abandoned, there was very little of me left. Um, and I was more lonely than ever before in my life. Yes. Well, the interesting thing is I said this, this relationship, while I knew it was the first relationship that I began to learn, actively learn, see my patterns and correct those patterns in the relationship. It wasn't one, you know, like before it had always been like, I would get out of a relationship and then look back and be like, oh, wow, I really see some patterns. Like I was recognizing those patterns inside of that this, this particular relationship and actively working on them and fixing them. So it was so valuable. But I did recognize, one thing I recognized inside of the relationship when I thought from time to time, but there are so many valuable things here, but there are also things that I think might not be totally healthy. And, and I, oh, and whenever I felt that I had this overwhelming feeling of, well, this is better than being alone. Like <laughs> being here is better than being alone because being alone is like ultimate, ultimate awfulness, you know, like that's how, what I thought. And so that made me stay when I probably should have left earlier and then getting out of the relationship for sure, you know, when it was finally done, I had that same feeling of, 
oh my God, now I have to be alone. And, and my instinct was, well, I can just go run and get into another relationship, you know, like, please don't let me be alone. Like that's literally, literally what I, I felt. And, you know, I just was talking about that horrible, empty feeling. I just identified it. That was my fear of being really alone with myself. And finally, what I said, no, like I'm going into this feeling. I'm not running from it or distracting myself from it. I'm going to just jump into it and figure out what the heck is going on here. And I realized that I needed to become a true partner to myself. And when I started to develop that, all of a sudden, I, it was like, oh, one, one is it's not scary to be alone. It's actually kind of amazing because I'm falling in love with myself and I'm awesome and I I love being with myself like now I'm discovering all of these new hobbies and all of these new desires that I've got the time to explore and appreciating myself on a whole new level and so that's truly what it for me it was like healing that fear of being alone and um yeah now I'm I'm not I know in the future, I'm not going to approach a relationship with all of my holes <laughs> because I am whole and yeah. it's going to result in a much better union in the future. So I'm excited. Because at the end of the day, and, and I really want people to get there, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. A lot oh, of yes. people in relationships don't realize how lonely they are. And so they fear nice. being alone because they think they're going to feel worse than what they're feeling. But once mm -hmm. you fall in love with yourself, once you reclaim yourself, you can be alone, but you'll never again feel lonely. Huge that is true. You'll never Huge again difference. feel lonely. And, and for me, that was worth it. To never again feel lonely because I remember sitting in my lounge one day and I thought to myself, my entire family is in the house and I am never felt more lonely in my life than what I did in that moment. And that's when I started realizing I needed to get out of the relationship because how can you be in a relationship and feel this lonely? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that is a really good point. That's true. And like I said, in before growing this relationship with myself has brought about this amazing sense of inner peace and that inner peace i mean just by nature is super expansive and comforting and it literally it it takes any loneliness that i'd ever felt or thought i would feel at being alone with myself and it just it's it's like I can't even fathom it like it pushes it right outside of my being um because it's so full that the presence of inner peace is so rewarding and so full and gives me so much like inspiration to work with that it's it's like there is no room for loneliness <laughs> I'm so filled up with myself in a good way not an ego I'm not filled up with my ego I'm filled up with my the best version of myself. So, so I, I have a question for you because I know that you're a copywriter. I noticed how my writing has changed dramatically over the last seven years um, of my own personal journey of falling in love and falling in love with life. Um, and a copywriter is about writing stories and, uh, and about bringing emotion forth and stuff. Do you feel that your writing has changed through this journey of reclaiming yourself and falling in love with yourself? How, how has it impacted your writing and your working with clients? Well, it's, okay, so it's not impacted my work with my clients because about four years ago, I um, really identified my niche as a copywriter. So, for many years, I was a generalist copywriter and I would write any kind of sales and marketing copy. But at four years ago, I really um, tapped into my true copywriting passion, which is writing case studies. And that essentially is sharing the stories of success that people have had with your program 
service or course. So that, that has been a very aligned with my passion for the last four years. And it allows me to bring forward people's best selves and the best, the best outcomes of their work. So that feels very happy and light and whole. So it's kind of funny because in my business, I was whole. <laughs> I wasn't persuading people to do things that they might not want to do. Or I was, I was literally tapping into the best of people's businesses. So that felt very good. But what has really changed for me as a writer is that in the last couple of months that I've been doing this deep inner work, I've been journaling and I've always been a person who's like, yeah, I need to journal. And then I don't like, oh, I got to get on that. And then I procrastinate and I don't, you know, but, but I finally committed to the work of growing and deepening my inner self and and really embodying and finding my best self. And a part of that journey I knew was journaling. And so in the way that I write for myself, just in my journal, which is, you know, obviously different than copywriting, but it's still very much writing. Um, there is this uh, very deep sense of clarity and creativity and I go back and I read some of my entries in my journal and it just literally sounds like poetry. Like, I'm like, uh, I don't think that I was the only, like my rational mind was not the only person writing here. Like I literally was getting a whole nother layer of words and communication from my higher self, from the universe, from forces much bigger than myself. And so that writing has changed dramatically and I feel like the insights that I'm getting through that type of work I don't know what to do with yet that yet but I have really got the feeling that I need to share some of these insights through my copywriting maybe just in a different way maybe it's supporting business owners in this inner work space you know, maybe it's writing a blog, maybe it's writing a book. I don't know. I'm not, I'm too early in the process to really figure out what's happening, but I, all I can say though, as far as my copywriting goes is because I have established this really deep inner peace, it slowed everything down. So I'm bringing a deeper level of myself to my client work. And I do feel that while the content is still as meaningful as it's been over the last four years, there's a one level deeper of intention to it and care and love for it because it's coming from that whole place in myself. And I definitely have like the responses that I'm getting back from my clients. They've always been great, but, but there's like a deeper level to it where they're like, that you you've connected with my business and with my client in a way that just feels really rich, you know? So yeah. I, that, <laughs> I love that. That, is that a good answer? And, you know, and sometimes we, we get to receive all of these things and we don't necessarily have to share it um, with the world. And, and that's yes. one of the things right. that I have discovered, especially with women, they feel like they have to share everything with other people and what I've come to realize is that, no, um, we get to be selfish in, in our journeys as well for ourselves. And we get to keep that sacred and we don't have to share everything with the world, which well, is can I, for, for can I tell you something like to be of service. Yes. Yes. Can I, I just, this, the, the, you brought that up and it just, I had the most amazing experience the other day that speaks to this exactly. And I've been doing, because of establishing this re new relationship with myself one thing that I wasn't you know I didn't know was going to happen which has been such an amazing side benefit is it is it has called me to deepen my relationship with all of these different areas of my life so one of those areas is I really am establishing a much richer clearer relationship with my financial abundance and my financial goals so I've, I've been doing this abundance practice and 
a part of this practice is every day I do like this 15 minute meditation where I am really sitting with my ideas about prosperity and con connecting with, you know, the abundance of source and all of that stuff. And so every day I kind of do the same, uh, the same meditation and it's about connecting with source energy, who is obviously the source of, uh, you know, all providing prosperity. And so I'm sitting with this and I'm every day for many days, I've kind of connected with that source and I take in like, you know, prosperity from source and then I shine it out to the world. Like I, I'm eager to share it. And I realized that like what's truly meaningful for me, whether it's, you know, abundance in any form is I just can't wait to share it because that's what brings me joy. But I, all of a sudden I had this huge aha moment a couple of days ago where I realized that I could visualize abundance coming to me, but it almost seemed like a hot potato where I couldn't wait to share it. And I thought, I think I've got a block with just receiving the abundance, just allowing it to come in and sit there for a while. And I don't need to share it right away. Like I, it's not hot potato. It's let it come in and let me just receive it and hold it and savor it and appreciate it and then share it. Of course I'll share it, but there's nothing wrong with really just savoring it as a gift that I've been given. And so it's the same, your same thing, what you're talking about with I do, I'm a writer and a communicator and I am much more of a writer than I am a verbal, you know, speaker. And so for me, sharing the written word is, is the way that I communicate. So of course I do want to share these insights that I have in the written way, but you're so right. There's nothing wrong with just having these insights and breakthroughs come in and just savoring them as the gift that they are to me so yeah it, yeah, it's all about receiving mind, it, it brings to mind for me our conversation yesterday in unapologetic where we were talking about the the feeling of luxury and it's allowing ourselves to luxuriate in our own experience and mm -hmm. i think what most people don't understand is you you are still sharing it because you're sharing a new energy you're sharing a new frequency with the world without having to physically share anything with the world but it is that slow it down savor it let it expand let it overflow let it be rich let it be enjoyed by you selfishly first because especially as women as our enjoyment grows for our lives we become richer and mm -hmm. we bring enjoyment to everybody in our space mm -hmm. we, we are enough I, I i keep saying this to people we are enough we, we even if we don't look like we're giving just by being our fullest most joyous enjoying selves we are giving to the world yeah i agree I totally agree. And, you know, I don't uh, brought up something about um, that, like, lux the, lux to luxuriate on things. I was mentioning about how one of the most unexpected things uh, that I had um, that I've experienced in really developing these deeper relationships with myself is that I've healed my unhealthy relationship to food. And for I mean 40 years like I and I grew up with a mom who also had a very unhealthy relationship to food so that's where I learned it you know um but to have struggled with food and sugar for all of these years and to constantly be beating myself up for what I'm eating or analyzing like oh no you shouldn't have that delicious bowl of soup it's got too much fat in it you need to have this salad you know like when I established this feeling of peace and everything slowed down in my life and I started to luxuriate and all of these different parts of myself I started to approach food from this place of what do I truly want to taste right now because my body is hungry like I'm not eating to distract myself 
or because I'm worried or because I'm sad, I am truly hungry. I feel a feeling of hunger. And what does my body want to taste and appreciate and enjoy right now to gain a sense of fullness in nutrition? And, and I thought like, so there are some days and my body's like, I want a delicious salad with all of these beautiful vegetables. But there are other days my body's like, I want the most exquisitely baked chocolate chip cookie with the best ingredients, not an Oreo or a Chips Ahoy cookie with like processed ingredients. I want the most luxurious cookie and I want to take the time to savor it and and so I allow myself that now. And that has filled me up in this way that I don't feel like then, oh, now I need to go eat a sleeve of cookies. <laughs> because we can like, deny ourselves, right? It's, yes. it's the denial that we yes. make. But when we allow yes. ourselves, and, and I started saying, what would be the most loving thing for me to eat right now? And yes. sometimes it is cucumber and sometimes it's chocolate. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. deny myself. And because I don't, there's nothing in the back of my head that goes, oh, this is going to be the last time that you're going to have a piece of chocolate. So you have to <laughs> gorge it all in. It's like, no, I can just have <laughs> chocolate now. And it's, it stabilizes everything. It stabilizes yeah. everything. We stop yeah. gorging, we stop binging, we stop purging, we, we stop all the crap. Mm -hmm. Because it's just what will taste really yummy now. And when I've had yeah. enough. Because I know next time that I want more, I will have more. This, this, right. It's a really beautiful space to come from. It is. It so, is. So, yeah. As always, I'm aware of the time. Um, <laughs> I don't even know why I say half an hour. Like, seriously, we can never keep to that. How do people connect with you, Dana? Where's the best people for these ladies to connect with you at the moment? Well, the best place is uh, two places. One is I'm very, uh, my main social platform is LinkedIn. So, you can connect with me by searching Dana Owens or Next Level Copy on LinkedIn. And then also a great place to connect with me is through my website, which is nextlevelcopy.com. Um, yeah, those are the two best places. Beautiful. What do you take an unapologetic stand for in the world? I take an unapolog unapologetic stand in the world for anyone, <laughs> for anyone who is just trying to live in their own unapologetic truth. So I am just so um, in awe of the bravery that it takes for many people, most, most of all, you know, marginalized, uh, people in marginalized groups that really need to have the courage and the bravery to stand forward and step forward as their most truthful expression, knowing uh, all of the, the ways that they are marginalized or attacked or put in danger. And so for me, I just take such a stand for people who are just trying to express and live life in their own unique truth no matter what that looks like or naturally is to them so that's really important to me and I love noticing them in the world and then also just doing anything that I can to support that to export that um that's expression in them that's so beautiful Dana thank you so much this was an amazing conversation of course it went into the most unexpected places and for any of the ladies who are out there listening that are maybe going through something similar, you know, you're not alone. Like none of us got to where we are today because we only look for the rainbows and the butterflies. Like we've all, we've all been through some stuff. And I know, especially as strong, independent women, for me, the longest time there was shame in, oh my God, why don't I have all my shit together? Like, especially because I could help other people sort their lives out. But then there was the secret shame of at home, everything is not perfect. 
like if that's you you're not alone and um, you get to connect with women like us and we're not going to treat you like there's something wrong with you you are the badass that you are and once you get to love yourself you'll leave when the time is right if that's where you're finding yourself today Dana yeah. thank you this has been a gift this has been a true gift ladies thank you for your time I hope that you join us again next week for another amazing guest on the Unapologetic Women podcast. And as always, we get to live our legacies unleashed, unlimited, and unafraid. We'll see you next week. Have an amazing day further. Cheers.